saves hundreds of lives. Tilly Smith is a courageous girl. She loves to help others. She is also interested in studies. Her favorite subject is geography. Her geography lessons helped her save about 100 tourists at the Mau Khao beach at Phuket, Thailand, hit by tsunami. At the time, Tilly was only 10 years old. In 2004, she had visited Thailand with her parents and younger sister. Just before coming to Thailand, her geography teacher Andrew Kearney had taught her about tsunami. There were many tourists when she was at the beach with her family. Suddenly, Tilly was alarmed to see the waves at the beach receding. She warned her mother, Mom, a tsunami is coming, run! Her mom, Penny and father, Colin, immediately alerted the other tourist and the hotel staff at the beach. All of them rushed to safety in time. Everyone praised her act of courage and bravery. She has become very popular now. Bethany Hamilton survives a shark attack. Bethany Hamilton from Hawaii is a brave girl. She loves to surf. She is a fighter and survivor. She was only 13 when she lost her left arm in a shark attack. But she never looked back. She continued to surf overcoming her serious injury. In October 2003, she went surfing with her friend Alena Blanchard and her family. It was morning. She lay on her surfboard with her left arm dangling in the water. Suddenly, 14 feet tiger shark attacked her. She lost her left hand completely. The Blanchard family rushed her to Wilcox Memorial Hospital. She recovered and came back to surf within a month, teaching herself to surf with only one arm. She won many national and international championships, including the Espy Award for Best Comeback Athlete. She has written her autobiography, Soul Surfer, a true story of faith, family and fighting to get back on the board. Gunjan Sarma saves 10 children. Gunjan Sarma is a young girl from a small town in Assam. She had put herself in danger to save the lives of 10 other children. In December 2013, Gunjan along with the other children were returning home in the school van. Suddenly, a gunman hijacked the van along with the children in it. At Simaluguri in Assam, the driver wanted to save the children, so he dashed the van into a drain. The kidnapper picked a small child up and asked the other children to follow him. All the children started crying. Then the 14-year-old Gunjan asked the gunman to take her and leave the other children. The kidnapper took Gunjan through a dense forest. But the brave Gunjan was not scared. She did not eat or sleep in the night. When the kidnapper was sleeping, Gunjan ran away. She finally reached a village and the police were called in to rescue her. Gunjan is the recipient of the prestigious 
Geeta Chopra Award for 2014. Haruka Maruna cares for environment. Haruka Maruna is a brave and courageous girl from Miyazaki, Japan. She always thought of protecting the environment. She loved her dog Patrick. But she did not like picking up Patrick's shit with her hands. So, Haruka decided to do something innovative to solve this problem. Although she was a young girl at the time, yet she thought of making a pooper scooper that was different from other scoopers. She made an eco-friendly paper scooper. It breaks into dirt when thrown away instead of taking space in the landfill. Her dad, who runs the design office, was very happy to see his daughter caring for the environment. He helped Haruka set up a company in 1998 known as Haruka Family. In November 1998, she represented Japan in the Children's Conference on the Environment. It was organized by the UN and held at Nairobi, Kenya. Her work is appreciated all over the world. Robert Cook sacrifices himself to save a girl. Robert Cook was a brave and a courageous young man. As a skydiving instructor, he was ready to protect those who trained under him. His bravery cost his life but saved the life of 21 years old Kimberly Deer. In August 2006, he was flying with the first timer Kimberly when the aircraft engine failed. The aircraft was rapidly falling down. But Robert did not panic. He asked Kimberly not to worry. Keeping himself cool, he then made Kimberly sit on his lap hooked her harness to his and embraced her. He turned his body so as to protect her. Finally, the plane came crashing down. Robert took the impact of the crash upon himself. His body acted like a cushion for Timberley. She survived the crash thanks to Robert's noble sacrifice. But Robert lost his life, acting as a human shield for a stranger. He was only 22. He was selfless since childhood. The man who put himself at risk. During the World War II, Hitler punished the innocent Jews because of his hatred. He put them in concentration camps where they met with tragic ends. Life in these camps was worse than hell. One concentration camp was in southern We told Piliki heard about the camp in Poland, he decided to help people. He volunteered to be arrested and put into this camp. He wanted to gather secret information about the brutality in concentration camps and pass it on to the Allies forces fighting against Hitler. We told stayed in the camp for three years. Thereafter, he managed to escape. The information he gave helped the world understand how prisoners were tortured and put to death. In the end, 
the allies forces won the war vetoed was unfortunately executed by stalin's police in 1948 much later in 1989 his bravery was recognized He is described as a diamond among the Poland's heroes. Mark fights a panther to save Colton. In 2007, Colton Reeb had gone on a camping trip in Canada with his family. He was staying in a cabin. One evening, a big male panther attacked Colton from behind when he was going to an outhouse the panther bit Colton's head as it locked its front paws around his neck Mark Patterson a family friend immediately rushed to help Colton as he heard his screams he kicked the panther 5 times but the animal didn't Mark then jumped onto the animal. He wrapped both his hands and one knee around the panther and squeezed its neck. The animal left Colton but threatened Mark. The panther growled loudly before attacking Mark, but Mark was brave. He also growled back. screamed and threatened the animal with his gestures the animal was now backing off while mark continued howling and flinging his arms to scare the animal away meanwhile colton ran away to safety dave risked his life for shirley dave hatsock is a brave skydiving instructor who saved the life of Shirley Daigot. In 2009, Shirley decided to celebrate her 54th birthday in an innovative and adventurous way. She decided to skydive. She was nervous but also excited because this was her first skydiving experience. Shirley and her 44 years old instructor dev jumped together dev attached himself to her harness initially everything worked fine but suddenly dev found out that the parachute was not opening completely the backup parachute too got tangled with the first one shirley was shocked She started praying for her life. Dave wanted to save the life of Shirley. So, he arranged himself in a way that he came below Shirley. This way, he could take the blow while Shirley could be safe. After the fall, he was badly hurt. While Shirley escaped with minor surgeries dave was paralyzed from neck down but he is optimistic michael saves woman from burning car in november 2009 jody oaks was driving back from work she was feeling sleepy while driving her car crashed at a full speed into a tree and burst into flames Michael Gay passing through the same road a little later was alarmed to see a tree burning in the empty field as he drove closer he saw the burning car Michael immediately rushed to the spot he found a woman screaming inside the burning car Michael tried to save the woman but the door of the car was jammed in addition the flames were too big for him to help her 
he squeezed himself through the window. Finally, he was able to extricate Jodi out of the burning car. Jodi was rushed to the hospital. She had 50% burns, facial fractures, internal bleeding and bleeding of the brain. One of her legs was broken. She would have died if Michael had not helped her. Wesley Saves Dean Wesley Autry did an act that most of us might not have dared to imagine. In January 2007, while waiting for a subway train with his two kids, Wesley saw a boy named Cameron Holopeter fall to the ground. He rushed to help Cameron. Cameron was up on his feet but was still dizzy and disobedient. Failing to maintain his balance, he fell onto the tracks between the two rails. Suddenly, Wesley saw a subway train approaching. He reacted immediately. He did not have enough time to pull Cameron out of the tracks. So, he jumped on the tracks and covered Cameron with his body, pinning him down between the rails. The train did not stop. It rolled over them, so close that Wesley's hat got some grease marks. Cameron had apparently suffered a seizure. Wesley was able to save a man's life because of his bravery and quick thinking. Brave teacher protects students. David Benke is a maths teacher at Deer Creek Middle School. He is credited with saving the life of his beloved students. One day in February 2010, the students were leaving the class. Suddenly, a strange man entered the school, pulled out his gun and began randomly firing shots at the students. No one was killed, but two students were injured. David rushed to the scene on hearing the shots. Risking his own life, the 57 years old teacher charged the gunman. Immediately, the assistant principal and another teacher also rushed to help him. They managed to take away the gun from the criminal. David does not want any praise because he said that he cares for his students. He is humble and says that he is not a hero. The situation could have been far worse if not for the quick action of David. His students open a Facebook group titled Dr. David Benke is a Hero. A man on wheelchair fights off a robber. Larry Skopnik has to take the support of a wheelchair to move around. But that has not made any difference to his courage. In 2010, he fought against a robber and saved Kindy Gravel, the owner of the commercial dry food shop store. Larry was in the shop when a man in a black shirt came to purchase cigarettes. He gave a dollar fifty note. Cindy immediately recognized it as fake. She did not accept the note. The man started quarreling with her. Cindy threatened to call the police. The man became violent. He said that he would rob the store. 
When Larry saw the man trying to attack Cindy, he rushed in his wheelchair to defend her. He pulled the robber away, but the robber pushed him out of the wheelchair. Larry fell down on the ground. Immediately, some more people rushed in to help Larry. The police got the robber. On San Suki's struggle for democracy. Myanmar is India's neighboring nation. The old name of this nation was Burma. This country was ruled by a dictator. The ruler of Burma did not give freedom to its citizens. People did not speak against the ruler because they feared him. He used to put any person who spoke against him in jail. So, no one spoke against him. But Aung San Suu Kyi was brave. She did not fear anyone. When Aung San Suu Kyi spoke against the ruler, she was imprisoned. She remained imprisoned for about 20 years. She had friends in many countries. They supported Aung San Suu Kyi when she was arrested. So, the ruler of Myanmar had to release her in 2010. After her release, changes were introduced in Myanmar. People began to enjoy freedom and democracy. The credit for reforms is given to the brave Aung San Suu Kyi, who got the Nobel Peace Prize in the year 1991. The Brave Helen Keller When Helen Keller was a child, she felt terribly ill. As a result, she could not hear and see. She became deaf and blind. Most others in her position would lose every hope from life. But she was brave and courageous. She did not let her disabilities come in the way of her success. Slowly and gradually, she learned to communicate. She persisted in her efforts. She brought light into her world of darkness. She never stopped learning. She learned to read and write using her sense of touch. She became a graduate. The life of Helen Keller is inspiring. She must have been really brave to overcome her disabilities and challenges. She spent rest of her life lecturing, teaching and educating people. She wrote many books. Today, many people are inspired by the story of Helen Keller. She changed history. People began to believe that those with disabilities can also overcome the challenges of life. Three men embraced that to save many. In 1986, there occurred a serious nuclear accident in Russia. This is known as the Chernobyl disaster. Deadly radioactive material entered into the environment, killing thousands of people. At this time, the three cleanup volunteers, Alexei Anenenko, Valery Bespalov, and Boris Baranov came forward to stop a nuclear meltdown. In this nuclear reactor, highly dangerous radioactive liquid contaminated a pool of water. 
the danger of blowing up was approaching every moment. The three men in scuba gear entered into the radioactive water to open a gate valve. They knew they would die. But they opened the valve for the contaminated water to drain out. This was a great act of bravery, which not everyone can perform. Had the three men not volunteered to enter into the contaminated water, there could have been a huge disaster. A thermal explosion could have possibly destroyed the whole Europe completely. The three men died of radiation within days. Teens rescue two kids. Roy Madrill Jr. and Chris Martinez are two brave teens from Tucson, Arizona. One day, they were at a local fuel station to fuel up. Suddenly, they heard a woman crying for help. The woman was 27 years old, mother of two children. She was screaming that a carjacker had speed off with her car and two children. Inna, the mother, was talking to someone outside the car when the carjacking took place. Hearing her cry loudly, Midril and Martinis rushed to chase the carjacker. While Martinis was driving, Midril called 911. He informed the police about the incident. The carjacker stopped briefly to drop the six-year-old kid. Later, the police chased the carjacker and caught him. The criminal was sentenced to six and a half years of kidnapping and auto theft. The mayor of Tucson and the Red Cross gave the teenagers a real hero award. Saint Cartwright saves grandma. Saint Cartwright is 12 years old boy who lives with his parents and grandmother Rose in their home in Vernonia, Oregon. He is now being hailed as brave saint as he had risked his life to save his grandmother from a raging fire. In 2012, Sate smelled leaking gas at his home and looked around for the source. Just then, he saw his grandmother lit a cigarette in her bedroom. Within seconds, she and the entire house was engulfed in flames. She was barely able to walk. Sate knew that no one else was in the house to save the grandmother. So, he went inside the room and managed to carry his grandma safely out of the house. He requested his neighbors to call the ambulance. Although their home was damaged by the fire, yet the grandmother was saved. All because of brave Sate. The hero of 1989 Tiananmen Square. China is a neighboring nation of India. It is a big and powerful country. There is no democracy in China. People do not have freedom in China. In 1989, the students began protesting against the Chinese authorities. A large number of protesters assembled at Tiananmen Square in Beijing. The Chinese government ordered the army to use force against the protesters. A column of military tanks approached the protesters. There was a young student 
among the protesters. He ran and stood in front of the approaching tanks. Everyone admired his bravery and he became a hero. Some of the protesters pulled him away before he was crushed by the tanks. Till date, his identity is a mystery and he is called simply Tank Man. Today, no one remembers this hero and he is forgotten. It is rumored that he was executed. Others believe that he went into hiding. But at that time, the Times magazine listed him among the hundred most influential people in the 20th century. Gandhi's Dandi March Mahatma Gandhi was among one of the bravest people in the world. He fought against the mighty British without any weapon. He and his followers suffered terrible hardships and were jailed again and again. He broke the laws that were made against the Indians, but he never used violence. Once, the British government in India imposed tax on salt. Everyone, from rich to poor, depends on salt for cooking food. Gandhi opposed this law because the price of salt should be negligible, since poor people also consume it. In order to break the salt law, Gandhi decided to trek a distance of 248 miles along with his followers to Dandi, a coastal town. He and his followers decided to make salt at Dandi. The British used violence against them. They did not allow them to break the law. However, this incident exposed the true face of the British rule. Gandhi became a hero of millions of hearts. The Courageous Rosa Parks Rosa Parks was a brave woman in America. Some decades ago in America, the white people did not treat the black as their equal. The blacks were segregated, which meant they were not allowed to study in schools where the white children studied. The black people were not allowed to sit with the white people. Rosa Parks was an African-American. She did not like to be discriminated. One day, she was going by bus. She was asked to give up her seat for a white passenger. She refused. She was arrested because she had broken law. Her act of courage and bravery caught the attention of media and people. She became popular overnight. The civil rights movement was already going on in America. Her act of bravery gave strength to the movement. However, her bravery was soon forgotten and she remained unrecognized for about a decade. Later, she received national recognition. Maria the Brave Swimmer Maria was a brave girl. She was ready to help anyone in need. She cared for her younger brother, Daniel. Maria loved to play. She also liked swimming. She wanted to become a national junior champion in swimming. Her father would help her. He would record her timing when she swam. One day, 
her father exclaimed, Well done, Maria. You have beaten the record time of the last year's champion. On the day of the swimming championship event, she arrived on time. She was prepared. Her parents also came to see the event. As the referee blew the whistle and indicated to start the race, Maria jumped into the pool. She was ahead of everyone. Suddenly, she noticed her friend Julia being drowned. She quickly swam to save her. Julia was saved, but Maria lost the race. Everyone was happy when she won the Bravery Award. Joe, the Brave Rider Joe loved horses. His father owned a stud farm with many horses. Some of them were the world's best horse breeds. These horses were tall and strong. Joe was specially fascinated by a tall and strong horse, brown in color. He called this horse Ace. He loved Ace because it followed his command. Joe loved to ride on Ace as it swiftly sped through the fields. One day, a customer came to purchase a horse from his father. The customer selected a grey colored horse. This horse was fast but difficult to control. The customer decided to ride this horse to test its speed. After running for some distance, the grey horse went out of control. The customer began shrieking in fear. Joe immediately rode on Ace to help the customer. After chasing for some time, Ace caught the other horse while Joe brought it under control. The customer thanked Joe. You can donate your blood to anyone, her mother said. Jenny felt very happy. One day, Jenny was playing with a little girl, Alina. Suddenly, Alina fell off the swing. She was rushed to the hospital. Alina needed blood. Jenny volunteered to give her blood. But the doctor said, Little girl, you are too young to give blood. You need to be 18 years old. Without losing time, Jenny called her mother, who donated her blood. Finally, Elena recovered and thanked Jenny. Jenny helps her friend. Jenny is only 10 years old, but her knowledge and understanding beyond her age. The other day, her class teacher taught her about the importance of blood in a human body. She listened to the lesson carefully. When she came back home, she asked her mother, Mama, what is my blood group? Darling, your blood group is O negative, the same as mine. It is a rare blood group. Malala defies terrorists. Malala Yousafzai is a brave young girl from Pakistan. She is interested in studies and wants every girl to study. Her home is in the Swat Valley in Pakistan. When she was only 12 years old, in 2009, she wrote about the Taliban terrorists in her area. They did not want the girls to study. They wanted the girls to remain covered in veils. 
Malala did not follow the orders of the terrorists. She continued to go into the school while many other girls did not go to school for the fear of the terrorists. Malala did not fear her life. One day in 2012, some terrorists came looking for her when she was in a school bus. They shot her three times. Malala was immediately hospitalized for treatment. Later, she went to the UK where she recovered. God did not want her to die. She recovered and received the Nobel Prize in 2014. Everyone praised her bravery. Dinah saves the audience. Dinah is a brave girl from Russia. She has a sister and a brother. She is the eldest among them. She loves to play with her younger siblings. Dinah loves animals. She does not fear dangerous animals. One day, Dinah went to watch the circus along with her family. Everyone was enjoying the circus. The children sat totally mesmerized before the spectacular display in front of their eyes. Suddenly, a tiger came out of the cage. It began roaring. It looked violent. It did not listen to the commands of the ringmaster. Dinah was sitting in the front row, very close to the ring. Suddenly, she saw a circus net lying nearby. She asked her father to help her with the net. In a quick move, she and her father threw the net over the tiger. The tiger was under control now. Everyone praised her bravery and her photo was published in the newspaper the next day. Ayu finds his lost sister. Ayu lives in a village in Kenya. Ayu is the elder of the two siblings. Her younger sister is Imara. He loves to play with his younger sister. He cares for her. Ayu's mother and father go to work in a farm. The children do not go to school. One day, Ayu and Imara were alone in their hut while the parents had gone to work in the farm. Imara was playing outside her home while Ayu was looking at his picture book. Ayu did not realize where Imara went outside. He called her name loudly, but there was no response. Ayu was shocked to find his sister missing. He didn't know what to do. He quickly informed the village chief about his missing sister. The village chief sent his men across to search for her. Finally, Imara was found in an animal farm. Everyone was happy that Imara was found. Alexander saves a small boy. Alexander lives in Warsaw with his family. He likes listening to stories on bravery. His grandfather, Jacob Matthews, tells him the story every day. One day, his grandfather told him a story about World War II. He told him that the World War II was fought between good nations and bad nations. 
he also said that in the end the good nations won the war alexander decided that he would be on the side of good in the school he noticed a small boy surrounded by some big boys the big boys were troubling the small boy and the small boy was crying alexander rushed to help the small boy then turning towards the big boys alexander told them not to trouble the small boy the big boys laughed and made fun of him alexander was fearless he said that he would call the police if they misbehaved again the big boys ran away ananias forms a peace mission ananias is a brave boy who lives in tel aviv the capital of israel he has seen war right since he can remember he now goes to school but his school remains closed several times in a year because of the war he wants everyone to live in peace a few weeks back ananias had to live without electricity because of a war that was going on several missiles bombs and rockets were flying from the two nations that were fighting ananias thinks war is too bad it causes loss of life and properties he wants to do something so that war may not take place again ananias asked his class teacher about war he asked her how one could have peace his teacher suggested him to form a peace mission beginning from his school ananias has formed a peace mission his peace mission includes children from all over the world who dislikes war the brave boy from greece ariston lives in athens the capital of greece he has read the stories of many brave greek warriors he is interested in reading the story of his nation his teacher has told him that greece in the ancient times was a powerful nation there were artists poets writers philosophers and politicians in greece but he is most fascinated by the greek warriors ariston wants to dress like a warrior in the fancy dress competition in school he won the award for the best fancy dress as a greek warrior He looked majestic in an armor and sword riding a horse. Now Ariston wanted to do a real act of bravery. He had seen brave warriors in movies performing daring feats. His father told him that the acts in movies are not real and no one should try to imitate them. instead he can participate in sports hence he has started playing football in school frehiwot fights chain snatcher frehiwot is a young and brave girl she has come all the way from khana to study in india frehiwot lives alone in a hostel for girls in the beginning she had no friends but now she has many friends frehiwot feels lonely in a new society but her friends cheer her up 
One day, Freyi Watt went shopping alone in a market nearby. She liked the market because she could find many items that were not available in Khan. She loved Indian beads and ornaments. She feels good and confident while wearing those ornaments. While coming back after shopping, it was late evening. Suddenly, she felt a slight tug on her chain. She realized that a chain was snatched when she saw a man running away. She was a fast runner. She ran after the man and hit him hard. She knew martial art. The man returned her gold chain and ran away. Josh saves his family. Josh was a courageous boy. His parents always complained that Josh always ate junk food. But Josh loves to eat junk food. He could not participate in sports and other activities. His mother used to scold him, but he would not listen. One day, Josh was going with his family to attend a marriage outside the town. They were waiting on a platform for the train. The family was carrying costly items like gold jewelry in the luggage. Josh began pestering his mother for chips. The mother did not want to create a scene there. So, she gave him a 10 rupee note to buy chips. When Josh was buying a packet of chips from a shop, he heard three thieves talking. They were planning to steal away his family's luggage. He came and quietly informed his parents about it. The thieves were caught as his father called the police. Bruno helps tourists. Bruno lives in Milan, a beautiful city in Italy. There are beautiful lakes and gardens in Milan. Tourists come to visit Milan from all over the world. Bruno knows little English. He can understand and speak English at the primary level. Bruno wants to become a tourist guide when he grows up. His father is a tourist guide. Every evening after his school, he accompanies his father to tourist spots. He watches his father explaining the importance of lakes gardens, museums, and mountains. One day, Bruno and his father along with some tourists were riding a gondola. Gondola is a beautiful long boat. There was a child in the gondola. Suddenly, he fell into the lake. No one but Bruno noticed the child falling. Bruno immediately jumped into the lake and saved the child. His parents thanked Bruno. Everyone said, Bruno is a brave boy who helps those in need. Norge Dorji helps the injured child. Norge Dorji is a small and happy child who lives with his family in a village in Bhutan. He has come to study in a residential school in India on scholarship. He is learning to speak in English. He is good in sports. He represents the school junior football team.
Norge doesn't like other children making fun of him. They say he has small eyes. Norge feels bad, but he does not say anything. One day Norge was playing football. The children in the opposite team were playing foul. They had deliberately hit him with boots because he was a good player. And the opposing team was losing the game by two goals. Suddenly, a child from the opposite team fell down. He was severely injured. Norge rushed to help. He carried the child to the medical room. Now everyone liked Norge. They did not make fun of him. Nick catches the thief. Nick is an intelligent student. He wanted to learn new things. His favorite subject is science. He wants to invent machines and gadgets for different uses. His science teacher encouraged Nick to read science. He helped Nick do the projects. One day, a burglar stole away valuable items from Nick's house. Nick's family now wanted to be careful with burglars. There were too many burglaries taking place in the colony when Nick lived. Everyone in the colony was worried about the thefts taking place. The guard did not know when the thief came and stole away the valuables. Nick had an idea. He told his science teacher that he wanted to make a burglar's alarm. The science teacher helped him make the alarm. The next time when the thief came, the alarm produced a loud siren. Everyone woke up and the thief was caught. Everyone praised Nick for his intelligent act. Animesh doesn't want children to suffer. Animesh was a poor boy. His father could not afford to send him to school. So, he began working in a small factory. It is not legal for children to work when they are less than 18 years old. Animesh was very young. He was only 11 years old. The factory owner made him work very hard. He was paid very little money. One day, some officers came with the police at the factory where Animesh was working. There were many children working in the factory. The police rescued Animesh along with the other children. Animesh started living in a shelter home with the other children. He began studying and learning. Animesh still remembers his old days and feels bad about it. He doesn't want the children to work. He now assists an NGO, non-governmental organization. He tells them how he was treated and forced to work. This NGO rescues children who are working in factories. Korun Gamba has presence of mind. Korun Gamba Kumar is a young boy from Manipur. He is very young. Korun Gamba, now nine, is intelligent and courageous. He enjoys watching cartoons. He has a younger sister whom he plays with. One day, 
Kurun Gamba was alone with his sister in the house. His parents had gone to attend a relative's marriage. His younger sister was sleeping while he was watching a cartoon film on television. Suddenly, he saw that there was a fire in his room. Karun Gamba was worried for his sister. He rushed with a blanket to douse the fire. The fire was extinguished. His sister was also safe. Nothing happened to her. Unfortunately, his face, hair and thighs were slightly burnt. Karun Gamba had seen Tom dousing fire using a blanket in the cartoon show Tom and Jerry. Everyone praised him for his bravery and his presence of mind. He was awarded the National Bravery Award in 2013. Jimin saves her father. Jimin is a brave girl from South Korea. She is only 13 years old, but is already a black belt holder in karate. She loves other sports and outdoor activities too. She lives with her parents. Her parents often used to scold her because she liked to play always. One day, she was going with the father on his bike. He was going to drop her to the school. From there, he would go to his office. On the way, three gangsters asked his father to stop his bike. They started fighting with him. They snatched away his wallet. Jimin rushed to save his father. She started fighting with them. She could easily beat them because she is a black belt champion. Two of them ran away, but she got the third. Soon, the police came and caught the gangster. The other gangsters were also caught. Everyone praised Jimin's brave act. Compassionate Mother Teresa Mother Teresa came to India at a very young age. When she was a small girl, she was compassionate. She wanted to help the sick and the poor. She wanted to make the world a better place to live in. She decided very early in life that she would dedicate her life to the service of humanity. India was a very poor country at that time. The priests in the church she was serving asked her to go to India to help the poor and sick people. She was a brave woman because she dedicated her life to the service of the sick and the poor. She came to Calcutta, now Kolkata, in India. She used to visit the streets of Calcutta to help the poor and the sick. When leprosy patients were often branded as untouchables and abandoned from their own house, Mother Teresa kissed the hands of the lepers without any fear and served them. Melissa wants to serve. Melissa is a young girl. She is compassionate but courageous. Once she read a lesson about Mother Teresa in her school. She decided 
that she would also be like Mother Teresa. She told her mother that she wanted to become someone like Mother Teresa. Melissa's mother was happy to learn about the choice of a daughter. She told her that it was a good decision, but she needed to be courageous. There are many problems coming in the way of people wanting to serve human beings, she added. Melissa said that she was ready for the problems. One day, while coming from school, Melissa saw a small dog whining. The dog had met with an accident and was severely injured. Melissa brought the puppy to her home and nursed it well. In a few days, the dog recovered. Her mother praised her. She said, You have a compassionate heart. You will do well to serve everyone. Ahmed saves a small boy. Ahmed is only 12 years old. But he is extremely brave and courageous. He lives in Iraq. He does not like the war going on in Iraq. Every day, he has to live under worries. Whenever he hears news about the war, he prays to Allah for peace. Ahmed decided that when he grows up, he will ask people not to fight but to love one another. One day, Ahmed was going out. Suddenly, he heard the sound of bullets very close by. Ahmed understood that the terrorists were shooting innocent people with their guns. Suddenly, Ahmed saw a small boy behind the car. Ahmed fell down as if he had been shot. The terrorists thought that they had killed everyone around. After some time, Ahmed ran towards the small boy and hid himself along with the boy behind the car that was parked there. Later, both of them returned home safe. Greg and the Wolf One day, a small boy, Greg, was sitting on the roof of his house. Suddenly, he saw a wolf passing below. Greg had heard many stories about a wicked wolf. The wolf would howl loudly in the night. When it howled, the children used to get scared. They would not sleep the whole night for the fear of the wolf. Greg wondered if this was the same wicked wolf that scared him every night. Just then, the wolf howled. Greg was not scared this time because he had seen the wolf. He did not fear the wolf as he was perched on the top. He called all the children. The children assembled on the rooftop. Greg said, Look friends, here is the wolf that scares us every night. Suddenly, all of them started shouting at the top of their voices. Thief! Scoundrel! Run back! The alarmed wolf ran away. It never came back again. Dog saves girl from kidnapper. Amina was a little girl who lived with her mother and a dog. She called her dog Goofy. 
Amina's mother trusted Goofy to take care of Amina when she left her alone. The brave and faithful dog had been with the family since Amina was two years old baby. One day, Amina's mother told Goofy to take care of Amina till she came back. Little Amina was a restless child. Finding nothing to do, she walked out of the house. Goofy caught her skirt but she shoved him away and ran on the way. Amina met a candy seller who was a wicked man. The candy seller showed Amina some candies and asked her to follow her. As Amina walked after the man, Goofy rushed from behind. He began to bark and grab the man's right ankle with his teeth. The man ran away. Thus, Goofy, the brave dog, saved Amina from the kidnapper. The Courageous Philemon Philemon was a courageous boy who lived in a village nestled in the mountains. His mother was always worried about him because he would run away deep into the mountainous woods. His mother often warned him not to venture alone into the woods. It was feared to be infested with wild animals. One day, Philemon went into the woods. He encountered a tiger cub in the woods. His teachers had told him that animals do not attack human if they are not harmed. Philemon walked away. Then he encountered the tigress, the cub's mother, but she did not harm him. Philemon had lost his way in the woods. The courageous Philemon was also wise. He knew his house was to the east of the woods. He also knew that the sun sets in the west. The sun was setting, so he began moving in the opposite direction. Finally, he reached his home. Peter escapes courageously. Peter's father was a rich businessman who dotted on his little son. He would buy him toys and chocolates. His father had taught him to obey elders. One day, a stranger met Peter when he was coming from school. Giving him a bar of chocolate, the stranger asked Peter to follow him. Poor Peter! He didn't know that he was kidnapped. The stranger was a notorious criminal. He phoned his father and asked him to pay a huge ransom and take Peter back. Peter's father was worried. Peter was alone in a room. One day, when the kidnapper was sleeping, Peter ran away. He met a gentleman outside who asked him why he was crying. Peter told him everything and gave him his father's mobile number. Soon, Peter's father came with the police. Everyone praised Peter's courage and presence of mind. Peter's father told him never take anything from a stranger. Balto the brave dog 
Balto was a brave and intelligent dog in Alaska. Alaska is the coldest place on earth, covered with a thick layer of snow. Sled, pulled by dogs, is the only mode of transport here. Balto is the lead dog of his sled team. He has to carry medicines for the sick children miles away in Nome. He is the only hope for the children in need of medicine. One day, the weather turned bad. Balto found himself in the worst storms ever. It had been snowing for days. The temperature went down to minus 30 degrees. The children were waiting for medicine, but Balto was nowhere in sight. Everyone thought Balto might have perished in the storm along with the other dogs. But Balto was no ordinary dog. He braved the weather under a heap of ice that protected him. Everyone was happy when Balto finally reached Nome. Manute, the brave child. Everyone in a Brazilian tribe said Manute was a brave boy. He would perform amazing feats of jumping from heights. He would catch poisonous snakes with his bare hands. He would swim across rivers and do many other amazing feats of bravery. The tribal elders prided in his bravery and he would not let them down. Once, when he was 15 years old, the tribal elders let him participate in the tribal warfare. He was so keen since his early childhood days. He had combated single-handedly against several warriors and chased them across his deck. But it was different today. He had to encounter death. A stray tiger stood barely a few steps ahead of him. Suddenly, the tiger jumped at him, but Manute wielded his lance at the speed of lightning. The injured tiger turned back and escaped into the forest. The tribesmen honored Manute by beating drums and lifting him on the shoulders. Brave Hamid Once upon a time in Persia, there was a poor but intelligent boy called Hamid. Although he did not go to school, yet he was beyond his age in wit and intelligence. He was sharp enough to understand words spoken in whispers. One day, Hamid noticed a group of men all dressed in fine muslin clothes and looked like wealthy traders. They were conversing something in whispers that no one but Hamid understood. He understood from their conversation that they were thieves waiting for the night to descend so that they might carry out their mission. Hamid's heart pounded and his nervousness grew. But he was brave. So he did not let his fear overcome him. He quietly ran to the police chief of the city. Initially, the guards did not let him enter in, but Hamid prayed. Finally, they let him speak to the police chief. Thanks to Hamid, the thieves were caught. Abdullah, the brave shepherd. 
Abdullah, a poor boy in Kashmir, loved his flock of sheep. He used to wander in the far off mountainous terrain, chef herding his flock. The herd of sheep sustained Abdullah and family throughout the year with meat and wool. One day, while chef herding his sheep, Abdullah saw some dangerous looking men armed with guns coming in his direction. Abdullah was not only just wise and intelligent, but also was brave and courageous. He hid himself behind a rock and watched the dangerous men digging trenches. Abdullah quietly moved down the mountains. He had a thousand questions in his mind. Who are these men? Why are they there? Why do they have guns? Just then, Abdullah saw a military jeep coming. He indicated the jeep to stop and courageously told the officer what he had just seen. Soon, the dangerous looking men were caught and were found to be terrorists. The army gave a bravery award to Abdullah. Malaika, the courageous girl. Malaika and Jemina were cousins living in Afghanistan. They studied together till class 5 when Malaika's father decided not to send her to school anymore. Poor Malaika. She could not study after class 5. Jemina's father soon found a job in the US and her family shifted there. Malaika's father decided to get her married. Poor Malaika. She cried and cried and then went to sleep. That night, she dreamt that she had started going to school again. The next morning, she courageously told her father, Abu Jan, I don't want to marry now. I want to continue my study. Her strict father scolded her a lot. Malaika was upset. The next day, a surprise awaited her when Gemina's father came from the U.S. He said that he was taking Malaika to the U.S to give her good education. After a lot of discussion and arguments, Malaika's father agreed to the proposal. Malaika is a happy girl now. The Brave Angela Little Angela was in class too, but she was intelligent beyond her years. She would often watch her mother cook in the kitchen and wonder at the tasty dishes her mother made. Her mother used to scold her to go and study. She did not like Angela coming to the kitchen. One day, Angela's mother was cooking in the kitchen when she came and stood by her side. Her mother shouted at her to go and study. Angela went to her room. After a long time, she went to the kitchen again but was aghast to see that the gas burner had been turned on and no one was there. The flames were raging high. She had seen how her mother operated a gas stove. So she immediately turned off the burner. 
just then her mother came her neighbor had called her downstairs and she had completely forgotten about the gas stove the mother praised angela for averting the danger the brave afro american girl holina was a sweet little girl who was as innocent as any child holina was an african girl who lived in america when holina complained to her mother she told her my sweet child you are too weak and too poor to do anything it was been always like that here in america poor holina felt bad but she decided to do something she grew up and studied well she wrote poems stories and essays to show the black people's feelings and suffering when the white people read her poems and stories they felt ashamed of their behavior the brave birsa birsa lived in a happy society this society had everything one needed every child in this society heard the stories of their brave ancestors the men the women and the children in this society were hard working then one day some outsiders came to this society the outsiders were treated well but they did not treat the people of this society well the outsiders took away the land and forest so the people of this society became poor they were never poor before the people of this society could not do anything because they had no weapons to fight with the outsiders had guns to fight with then brave birsa decided that he would arrange his men train them to be fighters and fight against the outsiders birsa fought the outsiders with bows and arrows the outsiders had guns but in the end birsa won the battle and the outsiders were driven away the brave prince once upon a time there lived a brave prince called arthur when he went to the battlefields in his shining armor the enemies ran away in fear arthur was not only brave but also kind at heart So whenever anyone met the prince with any problem he came forward to help one day an old lady came to meet prince arthur she said that she had no one to look after her in her old age she also said that her neighbors were troubling her because they wanted to encroach upon her land prince arthur assured her not to worry he sent his soldiers to bring the neighbors who troubled the old lady the prince warned the neighbors not to trouble the old lady the prince did not stop there but made a law that anyone who troubled old people would be severely punished and put in jail monica saves her sister monica and tanya were sisters monica was 4 years older than tanya who had just learned to walk although tanya would try to walk on her own yet monica would not let her walk she wanted to hold tanya in her lap poor tanya would start crying while the mom would shout at monica 
Monica would then ask Tanya to catch her while she would run ahead. Tanya would fall down while trying to catch Monica and then she would begin crying. Their mom would shout at Monica again. Then Monica would take Tanya outside so that their mom might not see them. One day, while playing hide and seek, Tanya strayed into the road. Monica saw her in a sudden glance. Just then, she saw a car approaching dangerously. Monica ran fast toward Tanya and pushed her away without caring for her own safety. Both the sisters were safe. Paul hits the bully. Paul was too small to save himself when the older boys troubled him in school. Paul seemed quieter than ever when he came home every day. His puzzled parents asked Paul to explain what happened in school, but Paul never spoke up. One day, Paul's dad showed him a bar of chocolate but would not give it to him unless he told them what was happening to him in school. Paul's father was shocked to learn how the older boys bullied Paul. He said, Son, it is a crime if you don't stand up against bullying. So tell me if you will do something, my child. Paul nodded his head affirmatively. The next day, the older boys troubled Paul again. This time, he remembered his dad's words. Without even a second's thought, Paul hit the older boy hard in retaliation. The older boys ran away in fear and never troubled him again. Fighting Injustice the fat Phil troubled the boys in his class. He would snatch their pen, tear away their books and would laugh out loud on the top of it. All the boys of his class complained to the principal. The principal warned Phil to behave. He gave him a sound beating. After that, Phil really became a nice boy. In fact, he became so nice that when all the other boys troubled him, he would not do anything. One day, the boys tore his shirt and sprayed ink on his dress, but Phil kept quiet. When the principal saw Phil in this state, he was shocked. On coming to know what had happened to Phil, he said, I only ask you, not to trouble others. But you must fight injustice, Phil. The other day, when the boys troubled Phil again, he resisted them. No one dared to trouble Phil again. The True Martial Art Hero Yuan was only six years old when he was sent to study under a master. The master taught martial art to his students. He made them take the vow that they would not use the art to harm anyone. Yuan learned the act quickly. One day, Yuan and his friend were practicing the martial art. In the course of the practice, his friend hit him hard. Yuan reacted instantly with a move but then stopped immediately. It gave his friend an opportunity to hit Yuan again. But Yuan defended himself. After the fight, the master asked Yuan why he did not use the punch he was taught. Master, that punch could have either killed or permanently disabled my friend. So I stopped. I have taken a vow not to harm anyone. 
except in self-defense. Ivan replied, The master was pleased. He cleared Yuan winner because he had an inner control over himself. Rashmi and a Rufian Rashmi, just out of college, had found a good job. She was happy with the job. But a Rufian troubled her on the way to office. He passed dirty comments on her. Rashmi used to feel angry. But she tolerated it. Rashmi complained to her mother, who asked her to avoid the Rufian and keep away from him. She did not find this answer satisfying. She told her best friend about it. Her friend advised her to travel with friends. She did not find even this answer satisfying. While going to sleep, she prayed to God to show her a way. Rashmi felt a voice telling her, Fight injustice. No one can harm you if you are right. The next day, Rashmi felt confident and stronger. As soon as the ruffian passed a comment on her, she gave him a tight slap. The ruffian never troubled her after that. Pallavi doesn't know fear. We don't know if Pallavi was brave. Pallavi was certainly innocent. She was fearless and courageous because she didn't even know the meaning of fear. When a child doesn't know the meaning of fear, the child has nothing to fear. One day, Pallavi was playing with her toys while Remai, her two years old brother, was sleeping. Her mother was cooking in the kitchen. Pallavi saw an interesting creature slithering over the bed and on the infant Ramai. She found it so interesting that she caught the object and pulled it away. When her mother came from the kitchen to see the kids, she almost fainted in shock. She saw Pallavi holding a cobra by its tail. She screamed in fear. The neighbors came running as they heard her scream. The neighbors praised the bravery of Pallavi and captured the cobra in a box to be given to the local zoo. Chandra Shekhar made his fortune. Chandra Shekhar was barely 11 years old when his father died. His mother left him and married someone else. Poor Chandra Shekhar wept that day. He decided that he would carve his own fortune. He began working at a railway platform as a coolie. He also sold reserve tickets to the passengers. Unfortunately, he fell into the bad company of picket parkers and chain snatchers. One day, the police caught him. Since he was still a child, he was sent to a remand home. Fortunately, he met a counsellor who motivated him to study. Chandra Shekhar went on to study with so much dedication that he topped the state board exam. A few years later, he qualified to study in a top engineering. After successfully completing the course, he was offered a job in the US, but he did not accept the offer. Today, he is helping other homeless children in studies. The Brave Old Lady One need not be physically strong to be brave. Bravery is also a matter of intelligence 
and courage. An old lady lived alone in her house, but she was brave. She was physically weak, but courageous. She had no one to look after her, except a pet dog. One day, some burglars entered her house. Her dog started barking, and the burglars were alarmed. So they quickly gagged the dog, who went silent now. But the old lady woke up. She instantly understood that some thieves had entered her house. She acted as if she was sleeping, so the burglars left her alone. The burglars were quietly collecting the goodies when she left the house and locked it from outside. Then the old lady began shouting, "Thief! Thief!" Soon her neighbors gathered outside her house. and the thieves were caught while everyone appreciated the courage of the old lady she rushed to her unconscious dog which recovered later the ghost scared even came to stay in the hostel of a school in class 5 he was young and nervous but courageous the seniors in the hostel enjoyed scaring the new boys one day a senior pointed out from the hostel window and asked the new boys can you see the dark big tree a ghost lives on that tree it was dark in the night so everyone was scared even also felt a little fearful but curiosity got over his fear he became so curious that he wanted to go close to the tree and find out the truth then the senior warned the new boy not to go near that tree in the night even was awake when everyone slept in the night slowly and carefully he went to that tree near the hostel with a torch in his hand he lighted the torch but saw nothing on the tree he did not fear ghosts anymore ajay avoids an accident one day ajay's mother was not well she was sleeping in the room while ajay came back on his own from school he knew his mother was not well so he did not disturb her his mother had asked him to take his food from the refrigerator heat the food himself and eat it ajay did not know how to light the gas so he decided that he would eat the cold food without bothering his mother as soon as ajay went to get his food out of the refrigerator He smelled something burning in the refrigerator. Smoke was coming out from the back of the refrigerator. Ajay was alarmed. The mother was nearly unconscious from fever. He was too small to reach the switchboard to put off the refrigerator. He had to act quickly. So he held the wire and pulled it off with a jerk and averted an accidental fire the trip once some children had gone on a trip organized by the school they had gone to mumbai from delhi they liked mumbai because everything there is fascinating and different they visited several places such as Elephanta Caves, Juhu Beach, Mumbai Devi Temple, Hanging Gardens, and many more. The children enjoyed traveling in the Mumbai local train. Once, only some children had boarded the train when it began moving fast. Many children 
fell off the train in an attempt to board it. Ravi, the school captain, did not lose courage. He warned the children loudly not to run. Those children who were in the train also panicked because some of their friends were left behind. Ravi acted fast and quickly. He ensured that an announcement was made at the next station. So all the children waited there. Some of the injured children were quickly administered first aid. The children decided to follow Ravi's instructions. Ramesh saves lives. Sometimes kids perform greater acts of bravery than adults because bravery has nothing to do with age. Ramesh did exactly that. He saved the lives of all his friends. Ramesh had gone on a school tour with about a hundred students. They were traveling in a bus. The driver of the bus was driving so fast that the teachers became worried. They admonished the driver, but he would not listen. After some time, the driver stopped at a place and said he was coming in five minutes. The teachers also got down from the bus while asking the children to sit inside. Suddenly, the bus began to roll driverless towards a big ditch. Ramesh, who was sitting in the front seat, knew the position of the brake. Acting fast, he put all his weight on the brake. The bus stopped and hundreds of lives were saved. Later, the driver was dismissed from the job for his careless driving and rude behavior. Motu shows the way. Once, Motu and his four friends went on a trekking expedition over the hills. While climbing the hill, Motu's friends made fun of him because he was climbing slowly. Motu was a fat child. He obstructed his feet against a rock to stop sliding further. He screamed and shouted. Motu rushed behind. Then Motu held on to a low line and offered his feet to his friend to hold. The friend escaped unhurt with Motu's help. Everyone reached safely under Motu's guidance. Rahim saves Kareem in the zoo. One day, Rahim and Kareem along with some of their friends, went to visit the zoo. They enjoyed watching different animals and birds, including baboons, zebras, chimps, rhinos, deer, cockatoos, patridges, and many more animals. They were excited when they reached the tiger enclosure. Kareem had a bad habit of throwing peanuts at the animals or poking twigs at them. Rahim had warned Kareem not to disturb the animals. But Kareem began irritating the tiger as he threw banana peels at the tiger. The tiger was lower down in the enclosure while Kareem had bent over the cemented enclosure. Kareem almost slipped into the enclosure as he bent over it in excitement. Rahim was quick to hold Kareem by his belt before he could have fallen down 20 feet in the enclosure and became the tiger's prey. Kareem thanked Rahim for saving his life and never disturbed the animals again. James saves 
Kevin. Jackson, the police officer, had two young kids, James and Kevin. Kevin was very young, while James was four years older than Kevin. Jackson loved his kids. He would play with his kids whenever he found time. Once, Jackson showed James his revolver and explained everything about it, including its safety lock. James was a responsible child who took care of his younger brother Kevin. One day, Jackson had accidentally left his loaded revolver on his bed while he was taking a walk outside in a park. Kevin began fondling with the revolver. Suddenly, James was alarmed when he saw Kevin playing with the revolver. James rushed quickly from behind and closed the safety lock of the revolver that was open at that time. James knew the consequences if Kevin accidentally triggered the revolver. When Jackson came back, he was shocked at his negligence, but proud of his son, James. Catching a Pickpocket Ashley was bold and brave and would come forward to help anyone needing help. Once, he was traveling in a bus when he suddenly heard a woman crying loudly, Help me! Someone has stolen my purse. There are valuables in it. No one cared for the crying woman while the bus continued to run. Ashley immediately shouted, Stop the bus! Don't let anyone get out of the bus! Since Ashley shouted with force and authority, the driver immediately stopped the bus. But nothing happened. As everyone was quiet, Ashley then asked that he would call the police and began calling the police when a dangerous looking man said, Is this the purse? It was lying here. The pickpocket had given back the purse at the threat of the police. The woman recognized her purse and profusely thanked Ashley for helping her. The other passengers made sure the criminal was arrested by the police. Joel saves a blind person. Joel was a young boy who never missed his school. His school was located at a blind curve. It was a dangerous curve where several accidents had taken place in the past. The parents of the school children had complained several times in the past about this issue, but the authorities did nothing about it. Joel's parents being worried about the safety of their child, had taught him all the traffic safety rules for the pedestrians. Joel was a little child, so he always waited for the senior students or teachers to help him cross the road. One day, Joel was waiting alone. There was no one to help him cross the road. Suddenly, Joel saw an old uncle crossing the road, lost and unconcerned, while a vehicle was coming from the opposite direction. Suddenly, Joel ran quickly and pushed the old uncle, who was blind. He profusely thanked Joel, realizing what had just happened. School children rescue flood victims. The swimming team of a city school had qualified for the state championship. Every member of the team was highly excited. As they were going 
to another town to participate in the championship. Their coach told him that a good sports team has positive spirit and excellent human values. The next day, they were in the town enjoying the scenic beauty. They were by the river to practice swimming before the tournament. Suddenly, a huge cloudburst caused torrential rain and the river was flooded. There were many tourists in the town who were caught in the flood. The city school swimming team began rescuing the flood victims without wasting a moment. They were only 10 boys and a coach, but together they saved hundreds of lives. The rescued tourists were brought to a safe place. Although the state swimming tournament was cancelled, yet the chief minister gave away bravery awards to the swimming team. Talented Kasim Kasim did not go to school because his parents were too poor to afford his studies. He was poor but talented and had a pleasant personality. He thought it was undignified to beg, so he decided to make use of his talent to earn money. He entertained tourists at Agra by showing and explaining them about the monuments and the historical places. He had learned the history of Agra in various languages while working as an assistant to a tourist guide. The foreign visitors love to hear about Agra in the native language and paid him generously. One day, a tourist was very impressed by his talk and said, You are too young to work for your living, my boy. Will you come to my country? I will educate and train you for future. Kasim readily agreed. Today, Kasim is educated and works with an NGO, non-governmental organization, to help the underprivileged children. Brave Kaushalya catches the chain snatcher. One day, a bold woman named Kaushalya was coming along with her neighbor Sandhya from school where their kids studied. They used to walk to the school while dropping and bringing back the children from the school. Suddenly, a chain snatcher swept past Sandhya and ran away taking her gold chain. Poor Sandhya became so nervous that she almost fainted out of fear. The brave Kaushalya ran after the chain snatcher, shouting loudly. Fortunately, some men were coming from the opposite direction. They were alarmed to see a woman running after a man. They had also heard her shout loudly. Without wasting a moment, the men caught the chain snatcher. Sandhya got her chain back while the chain snatcher was handed over to the police. While commending the bravery of Kaushalya, the police said that many more women got their gold earrings and chain from the chains. An old time criminal. Rohan saves Mohan. The Ramlila show was held peacefully every year in a village. But this year, it was not so peaceful. When Mohan was chosen to play the role of Hanuman, Sanjay felt so jealous that he decided to take his revenge. Actually, Sanjay used to play the role of Hanuman every year. 
He did not want anyone else to play this role. On the day of Ram Leela, when Hanuman was about to fly in the air to Lanka, Sanjay decided to do a nasty act that might have nearly killed Mohan. There was a strong but thin wire over which Hanuman was hooked so that he might appear as if he was actually flying. Sanjay went backstage to play his dirty trick. He wanted to cut the wire so that Mohan might tumble down. He was about to cut the wire when Rohan suddenly found him. He held Sanjay, threw him on the ground and saved Mohan. Millie helps police. Although everyone was praising Millie, yet she thought she hadn't done anything big to deserve the praise. The local newspaper reporters had come to take her interview. The police inspector had also come to thank her. Millie was a poor girl who took tuitions to finance her studies. One day, she came across a woman who had promised to take her to the city where she would get a good job and lucrative salary. Millie wanted to take up the offer because she was poor, but she refused and went to meet the police inspector instead. The police arrested the woman, a child trafficker, along with the gang. In her interview, Millie told that there was a seminar in a school she had attended. In this seminar, the instructors had told the students that they should report the matter to the police immediately if someone offered them good jobs in a city. Thomas saves Rita's life. Thomas was a young college student. He came from a small town and had worked very hard to gain entry into one of the America's best colleges. He was a fearless person and helped save Rita's life. One day, he was returning from the library after doing some research for his college assignment. The sun had set and the parking lot was almost dark. As he hurried to his hostel, he heard a woman screaming. He turned towards the sound and saw two men attacking a female student named Rita. He ran to save her. When the assailants saw him coming, they tried to escape with a purse. Thomas ran after them. One of them slashed his face with a knife, but Thomas did not stop. He was able to catch the assailant who had Rita's purse. Thanks to his efforts, the other assailant was also caught soon. The old man saves the village. Once there was an old man who lived in a village in Japan with his wife. When his wife died, he stopped talking to everyone and moved to a mountain nearby. The villagers would often come to check on him. One day, an earthquake hit their village. There were mild tremors and the villagers were not very worried. However, the old man saw from his house in the mountain that the earthquake had caused a massive tsunami. He could see the waves building up before they hit the village. He knew 
that no matter how fast he ran, the tsunami would reach before him. Suddenly, he had an idea. He set his house on fire. He knew the villagers would come to rescue him when they saw the smoke and flame. As he had expected, many of the villagers came running to save him and were, in turn, saved from the tsunami. Lewis saves farms animals from fire. Lewis was a young farmer. One night, he woke up when he felt thirsty. He got up to drink some water. While he was drinking, he heard some strange noises. He went outside to see where the noises were coming from. He saw that a building on the other side of his land had caught fire. Lewis ran to see if anyone was caught in the fire. When he reached the building, he realized it was a farm. The noise was coming from the animals who were stuck inside the farm as the door was locked from outside. Lewis quickly found a sturdy rod to break the lock. He then opened the door and let the animals out. Some of the smaller animals were disoriented because of the smoke. Lewis went inside the burning farm to bring them out. Thanks to his efforts, none of the animals died in the fire. Makalo saves the village. Makalo was an eight years old boy. He used to live with his grandfather in the village. The stories his grandfather told him filled him with courage and bravery. He wondered if he would ever get a chance to show his bravery. One day, when he was going to his friend's house, he heard a strange noise coming from behind the trees. He stopped immediately. When he looked closely, he saw a leopard hiding behind the tree. The trees were right next to the road. Makalo knew that the leopard could easily kill anyone walking on the road. He turned around and ran to the village, shouting at the top of his voice to attract everyone's attention. He did not worry about whether the leopard was following him or not. He warned everyone to stay inside, while the village elders informed the authorities. Thanks to Makalu, everyone was saved. Aziz prevents a train accident. Aziz was 14 years old boy. He used to live with his widowed mother. After attending school, he would work for a few hours at a small grocery shop near the railway station. One day, when he was on his way to work, he noticed that a piece of the track had been removed by some miscreants. Aziz knew that this was very dangerous. He ran to the station to inform the station master. However, before he could reach the station, he heard a train coming down the tracks. If the train did not stop, it would be derailed and many passengers would die. Aziz decided to stop the train himself. He turned and ran towards the train. He took off his shirt and waved it like a flag. When the injured driver saw him on the tracks, 
he pulled the brakes immediately. Thanks to Aziz, all the passengers were unharmed. Manuel stands up for children. Manuel was an old man. He lived in Brazil. He used to sell food from a van every day to earn money. He used to park his van near Children Park, opposite the busy bus stand. Every day, children of all ages would come to play in the afternoon. One day, Manuel saw some thugs near the park. He was dismayed to see the goons not allowing the children to enter the park. They wanted to take control of the park so that they might use it for illegal activities. The children were scared and decided to leave. Manuel told the thugs to leave because the park was for the children. The thugs threatened to hurt him, but Manuel was insistent. Even when they attacked his van, he did not back down. Ultimately, the thugs had to leave since they did not want the police to come. Amelia saves her grandfather. Amelia was a seven years old girl who loved to go for walks with his grandfather. She especially enjoyed the season of cherry blossoms when all the trees in her town were filled with beautiful flowers. One day, Amelia and her grandfather were so carried away by the beauty of the cherry blossoms that they went farther than usual. Amelia was not worried since she was with her grandfather. Unfortunately, her grandfather had a sudden heart attack. He sat down on a bench to catch his breath, but before he could say or do anything, he fainted. The sun had began to set and Amelia did not know the way home. But she behaved very bravely. She ran on the path until she found an adult. Amelia told the young man what had happened with the grandfather and asked him to help. Finally, the grandfather was saved and everyone praised Amelia. Janet survives a blizzard. Janet was a very adventurous and active girl. She loved to go hiking with her friends. One day, she decided to go on a hiking by herself. She was able to cover a large distance and set up a camp in a quiet and isolated area. While she was sleeping, the mountain was hit by a freak blizzard. When she woke up in the morning, her tent was surrounded by snow. Janet did not know what to do. But she did not lose heart. She took her essential belongings and decided to hike up the mountain until she found a clearing. She knew that the rangers would be looking for any survivors. After 14 hours, a helicopter spotted her and she was rescued. Janet's toes were damaged due to frostbite but she did not lose her love for hiking. She returned the next year and completed her solo hike. 
Tefo's bravery saves his friends. Tefo was a young boy who was studying in school. Unfortunately, his village was in an area full of conflict. Every day there were skirmishes between the rebel army and the government. One day, when the boys were studying, the rebels attacked their school. They locked the teachers in one room and started threatening the students. Tifo knew that he would be caught and forced to join the rebels if he tried to run away. He hid behind a desk and waited for the correct timing. When the rebel went to the other class, he sneaked with his friends into a storeroom and locked it from outside. Then he ran into the staff room and hid in a cupboard under a pile of papers. The rebels left after a few minutes, taking as many boys as they could. They did not check the storeroom because it was locked from outside. Gabriel rescues two children. Gabriel was a teenager who liked to spend his free time by the riverside. He knew how to swim very well, but he also knew that one must always be careful while swimming. One day, he and his friends were playing near the river. It is so hot. Let us go swimming, said a friend. No, replied Gabriel. This is not the right time for swimming. There are black clouds upstream, which means the river might suddenly swell up with rainwater. Suddenly, they heard the roar of water and saw water gushing rapidly into the river. To their horror, they saw that two children had been swept into the river by the sudden onslaught of water. Gabriel did not pause to think. He jumped into the river and swam towards the children. It was very difficult to swim against the ferocious river, but he was able to rescue them. Irina speaks up for an autistic man. Irina was a secretarial assistant in Moscow. Every day, she would take the metro to reach her office. One day, she was running a little late and missed her train. While she was waiting on the platform, she saw a group of rowdy teenagers in a corner who were creating a ruckus. At first, Irina ignored them. But then, she heard some whimpering sounds coming from the group. She went to see what was happening. She was horrified to see that the boys were teasing an autistic man. They had taken his bag and were not returning it. The man needed his bag as it had his money and other documents. Many people were looking at the teenagers with disgust, but they were afraid to speak up since they could see the group had guns. However, Irina did not feel scared. She forced the teenagers to stop teasing the man and return his bag. Cheng saves a panda. Cheng was a student of zoology. It was his dream to work in the panda reserve. He liked to spend his free time observing pandas 
in the natural habitat. One day, when he was in the jungle, he heard a panda's cry for help. He moved slowly in that direction. A short distance away, he saw the panda. It was choking on something and was unable to make any noise now. Cheng knew that the panda might die if he went to seek others' help. However, if he went too close, the panda could attack and injure him. But there was no other option. By then, the panda was nearly unconscious. Cheng quickly opened its mouth. He saw that the panda was choking on a plastic wrapper that some tourist had carelessly thrown away. Cheng removed the wrapper with the help of forceps and managed to save the panda's life. Jumki fights for ecology. Jumki was a young girl who lived alone with her mother in their village in the Pichakyo Western Ghats. Her father and brothers used to work in the city while Jumki and her mother farmed the small piece of land. One day, some men came from the city and told them that they would have to vacate their land. They said that they had bought the entire village as it was situated over a very large deposit of some mineral. Chumki was aghast that the men intended to uproot the entire village and destroy the forest to dig up the minerals. At first, the villagers were dispirited. But when they heard Chumki's fervent speech, they decided to fight for the land. They formed a human chain as a mark of protest. They refused to leave the land and declared the sale illegal. Since none of the villagers had received any money, or agreed to the sale of their ancient land. Courageous Bilal saves fellow boys. Bilal lived in Syria in an orphanage along with some many other boys. One day, the orphanage was attacked by the Syrian enemy. The owner of the orphanage felt it was dangerous to keep the children there. So he decided to smuggle the boys to a safer city by hiding them among the vegetables he used to sell. On his way, he was stopped at a checkpoint set up by the enemy. He told the guards that he was going to the city to sell some vegetables. One of the guards was suspicious and decided to check the bags. He hid the bag in which Bilal was, but Bilal did not make any sound. When they were at a safe distance, the owner rushed to check on them. He found Bilal badly hurt. But the boy did not make a sound as it would have sent them into danger. Thus, his action saved the lives of his fellow boys. Julia prevents a camping disaster. Julia and her friends were going camping for the first time from the school. They were very excited about it. The children had to hike for a few kilometers before they would reach the campsite. Julia and her friends were very excited by the beautiful birds and plants 
that they saw on the way. They began to dawdle. And before they knew it, the group had moved on. Nightfall found them all alone in the forest. Julia knew that they would have to wait till morning. She also knew that there were many dangerous animals in the forest. She quickly gathered some wood and lit a fire so that they might feel safe. She made sure that the fire burned all night so that no animals might attack them. The smoke also helped attract the attention of the teachers who rescued them early in the morning. Rian doesn't give up. When Rian was born, his hands were not formed properly. On the left arm, he had only two fingers, whereas his right arm ended with a stump. Many people pitied Rian because of his disformed arms. But Rian was very brave. He refused to see this as a problem and saw it as an opportunity to set an example of how everyone can lead a fulfilled life. Rian loved statues and wanted to become a sculptor. His teachers felt his desire would never be fulfilled because of his arms. However, Rian never gave up. He tried to see how he could bring his ideas to life. Even when people ridiculed him, he continued practicing. His parents encouraged and supported him. With time, Rian became skilled at sculpting clay. When he was 27 years old, Rian held an exhibition of his sculptures. People were amazed to see how beautiful his sculptures were. Alana overcomes her fear. Alana lived with her parents in Brazil. When she was very young, she had seen a horrific road accident. Since that day, she was afraid of blood. One day, she was traveling with her mother in their car. A truck was coming from the other side. One of the tires of the truck burst and the driver lost control of his vehicle. Alana's mother tried to swerve and prevent an accident. But unfortunately, they collided with the truck. Alana was not hurt, but her mother's left arm was broken and she was covered with small bleeding cuts. Alana's mother was very frightened. But Alana knew that she had to help her mother. She took out the first aid kit, bandied her mother's arm and cleaned her wounds. After that, Alana helped her mother tend to the driver of the truck who was bleeding heavily from the gash on his head saves mom and baby from fire. Al was a young Nigerian man. He liked to go for a walk every evening after dinner. One night, he heard commotion on the street ahead of him. He 
could see that there was a fire raging in a building. When he reached the building, he saw a young lady had collapsed near the balcony door. She had hurt her leg and could not walk. She had her baby in her arms. I knew that by the time the fire engine would come through the narrow lanes, it would be too late. He ran into the building and climbed the stairs. There was smoke everywhere and it was difficult for him to see anything. He followed the noise of the baby crying until he reached the lady. He pulled her onto his back and carried her baby in his arms and brought both of them out of safety. Nicholas and his friends free the gypsies. Nicholas and his friends used to travel around the country during their holidays. They used to go from village to village and work for their lodging. This way they could save money and help people as well. One day they reached a gypsy settlement outside a village. They found many women and children living in caravans. The women told them that the police had locked the men since they did not have any travel permit. Nicholas knew that no travel permit was needed for traveling from one city to another. He knew that the police did this to harass them. Nicholas and his friends confronted the police. They told them to release the prisoners, otherwise they would lodge a complaint against them in the next village. The police threatened to arrest them all, but Nicholas and his friends were fearless. Ultimately, the police had to let the gypsies go. Boris helps a child to safety. In the 1990s, the former Yugoslavia was wrecked by civil war. Boris was fighting the war along with his people. He spent many years in the trenches outside the enemy villages. One day, while patrolling, he saw a small boy hiding behind a tree. At first, he thought that he might be a spy. A closer look revealed him as eight years old boy. The boy belonged to the village that Boris was fighting against. He has wandered off and now he was lost. He did not know how to return to his village. Boris decided to take him to the village border himself. He knew that he could be shot, but he did not want to put the young boy's life in danger. On the way back, Boris was shot twice by the villagers, but he waited for the shooting to stop before he sent the boy back into the village. Keshia speaks the truth. Keshia studied in the ninth grade in her school. She was a very popular girl and a good student. One day, the teacher was late. The children began playing with the ball in the class. This was against the rules. The children did not notice that the teacher was coming. When the teacher entered the class, everyone rushed back to his seat and Alex was left holding the ball. The teacher was very angry 
at the behavior the students began blaming alex saying he had brought the ball and was trying to show them some tricks the teacher decided to punish alex for playing in the class most students remained quiet but kesia told the teacher that it was not alex alone who was to blame all of them had been playing the teacher was angry with the whole class but appreciated kesia's courage in clearing alex's name Kiara keeps her promise. Mrs. McAdams lived all alone in a little house on a small country lane. Ever since her husband died, her only visitor was a young girl called Kiara. Kiara would come every week to visit Mrs. McAdams and help her complete tasks. around the house Mrs Mac Adams enjoyed her company a lot Mrs Mac Adams used to get very lonely on Christmas so Kiara promised to visit her every year on Christmas One year there was heavy rainfall on Christmas Eve Mrs Mac Adams could not see the road from her house she knew kiara would not be able to come and was very sad however kiara was adamant on visiting mrs mac adams when her car could go no further she decided to walk in the snow all the way to mrs adams house It was very cold and dangerous to go by herself but Kiara did not want to break her promise. Carmen builds a bridge. In South America there are many villages that are cut off from the rest of the world because they lack proper bridges. One day Carmen saw a documentary on TV about a village where there was no bridge. The villagers had to put themselves across a rope. Carmen decided to help the villagers. She started a campaign to raise money for building a bridge in order to connect the village to the rest of the world. A large amount of money was required and many felt that it would be very difficult. However, Carmen had set her heart on achieving her goal. And she did not give up in the face of insurmountable odds. She went far and wide for public support to raise the money. Once she had raised the money Carmen and her friends went to the village themselves and ensured that the bridge was built in their presence Father Liam saves a murder suspect Father Liam was the head of a church in Ireland He was very popular and helpful Everyone in the village respected him One day a man Adrian entered the church Father Liam had seen his face on the news and knew he was wanted for murder Adrian swore he was innocent and asked for sanctuary According to church rules any man who asked for sanctuary would be safe in the church when the police came father liam refused to turn over adrian to them 
Adrian wanted another investigation to be done, as some important evidence had been overlooked. Till the police did not agree, Father Liam kept Adrian safe, even though the whole village turned against him for harboring a murderer. However, Father Liam knew that the real courage lay in doing what was right and not giving in to public opinion. The second investigation proved Adrian innocent. Madison follows her heart. Madison belonged to a rich family. She was brought up in wealth and never wanted for anything. As she grew older, she began to develop genuine sympathy for others suffering and trials. When Madison became an adult, she decided to donate all her money to a charity and live among the poor and work for them. This was not an easy decision. Madison knew she would have to face many difficulties. She knew that by giving away all her money, she would lose many pleasures of life. Many people tried to dissuade her. However, Madison had made up her mind. She had the courage to follow her heart, even though it led her onto a hard and difficult path. Despite all the problems she faced later on in life, Madison never regretted her decision. She felt the blessings of the poor were worth more than all the money in the world. Adeline helps her friend. Many years ago, Europe was ravaged by the Second World War. The Jews faced a lot of persecution and were targeted for their religious identity. Anyone who tried to help them was punished along with them. However, despite this, there were many people who came forward to help their Jewish friends. Adeline was one of them. She belonged to a religious Christian family. One of her best friends was Esther, a Jew. Esther and her family knew that they would soon be sent to prison and were looking for someone to help them. When Adeline came to know about it, she offered to hide them in her house. It was not an easy decision. If anyone found out, Adeline and her family would be sent to prison too. Adeline hid Esther and kept her aged parents in the attic and kept them same from the Nazi militia. Savannah saves Hannah. Savannah lived in the state of Louisiana in the USA in the 1880s. At that time, slavery was still legal in America. Savannah worked as a slave for a girl named Hannah. She had taken care of Hannah since she was born. Savannah loved her a lot. Hannah also treated her with great respect. She offered to give Savannah her freedom. But Savannah refused because she wanted to stay and take care of Hannah. After the Civil War had ended, the slaves of America were declared free. Many of the freed slaves were looking to take revenge from their former masters who had treated them cruelly. One day, some freed slaves attacked Hannah's house. Hannah was very scared. Savannah hid her under a bed and told the slaves that there was no white person in the house. 
against whom they could take revenge. She spoke so truthfully that the slaves believed her and left. Benjamin sacrifices his life for his nation. Benjamin was a young man. He was a patriot who loved his country. He joined the Air Force at the age of 25. After his training, he was assigned to a post near the frontier. Many people avoided such postings because there were always some tension at the border. But Benjamin was very happy and did his job wholeheartedly. One day, when he was doing a routine flight sortie, he noticed some suspicious movement across the border. Benjamin flew his plane as close to the site as possible. He saw that the opposing army was preparing for an attack. He knew that he should report this immediately. But before he could do anything, his plane was attacked. When the plane got fire, Benjamin decided not to eject and save his life. Instead, he guided his plane towards the army. When his plane crashed, all their weapons were blown to pieces. Rachel saves the village. Rachel lived in a small village in the Netherlands. The Netherlands is a low-lying country. To prevent flooding, dikes have been created in many villages. This prevents water from entering the village when the water level rises. One day, Rachel decided to get some pretty flowers for her mother. When she was collecting the flowers, she saw a trickle of water flowing through a small hole. In the dig, this was very dangerous as the water could make the hole larger. Rachel knew that the adults had to be informed, but she was afraid that by the time she informed someone, the leak would grow bigger. She put her finger in the hole to plug the leak. The water stopped flowing immediately. Rachel stood with her finger in the ice-cold water for five hours until her mother found her and immediately informed the police. Ander saves the baby. Ander was 15 years old. He was one of the best students of his district. Every day, he would walk 3 kilometers to reach his school. One day, he was on his way to school when he heard a man shouting. Ander turned around and saw a horse running on the road. It seemed to be scared. Behind it was a cart that was swaying dangerously from side to side. The owner of the horse was running behind. As the horse passed Ander, he realized there was a young boy sitting alone in the cart. The boy was crying very loudly. Ander could see that the boy was very scared. In a thrice, Ander jumped towards the horse and grabbed its reins. He pulled the reins with all his might. The horse reared up, but Ander did not let go. He was able to subdue the horse and save the child. Anya helped Azuri. Anya and Azuri studied in the same class. They were good friends. Azuri had been a victim of polio when she was very young. Due to this, her legs were slightly deformed. However, Azuri did not let herself feel physically challenged. One day, the school organized a marathon to raise money for charity. All the children in school were participating. The student would donate the money to the underprivileged children. Uzuri too wanted to help raise money 
and decided to participate in the marathon. Anya supported her decision and promised to help. Uzuri could not run very fast. Most of the children had finished the rain when she was near the halfway mark. Anya was near the finish line when she noticed Uzuri lagging behind. She came back to help her friend and ran with her. She encouraged her till Uzuri finally crossed the finish line. Edmundo saves his father's life. Edmundo lived with his parents in an upscale area of Sao Paulo. Every year, they used to go to the hills and stay in a secluded cottage. There were no shops or neighbors nearby. Udmundo and his family enjoyed their stay there. One day, they heard an announcement on the radio that a severe storm was expected. Udmundo's father went outside to check whether there was some danger to the house. Unfortunately, he slipped and fell. He hurt himself badly. Udmundo's mother could see that a doctor was needed immediately. But the nearest doctor lived an hour away. Udmundo's father was in great pain and needed medical attention. Udmundo volunteered to bring the doctor. He went out in the raging storm and hiked over the hills until he reached the doctor. By then, the storm had abated and the doctor came back with him. Thanks to Udmundo, his father was saved. Zola fights for her country. Zola lived in South Africa many years ago. At that time, South Africa was under the regime of apartheid. Under this, every person was given a position on the basis of the color of his skin. The white minority lived in great comfort. They had access to whatever they wanted. The blacks, on the other hand, were forced to live in small and cramped quarters. They had access to limited education and had to perform menial jobs. They were not allowed many facilities simply because their skins were black. Many people revolted against this system. The government jailed all those who opposed apartheid. Those who escaped detention went into hiding. They needed help in contacting one another. Zola was only 11 years old girl at that time, but she volunteered to help carry messages from one leader to another. In this way, she helped to keep the movement alive. Adnan fights for women's rights. Adnan was a courier delivery boy and often had to travel at awkward times. One night, when he was returning from a delivery, he saw a girl waiting at the bus stop alone. As he stood at the red light, he realized that a group of teenager boys were harassing the girl by making lewd remarks. Adnan parked his van on the side of the road and went to school the teenagers. The teenagers did not pay any attention to him and rudely told him to leave. They even threatened to beat him up if he did not leave immediately. Adnan was not scared by these threats. He told them that he would call the police if the boys did not stop harassing the girl. The boys fell silent but did not leave. Adnan knew that they would continue harassing her when he left, so he waited there until the bus came. 
Eliza stands up against the bullies. Eliza studied in class 6 in a school in London. The school was very strict. However, some students were ill-mannered and would bully others. One day, Eliza found out that these students were bullying one of her classmates. They would take away his books and tear out his homework so that he might be punished by the teachers. Blake was a poor boy and he could not afford to buy new books. Blake was very upset. Eliza advised him to tell the teacher everything, but Blake was too scared. That day, when the school closed, Alisa saw the bullies coming to tease Blake. She boldly went up to them and told them to leave Blake alone, otherwise they would regret it. The bullies laughed at her and teased Blake. Alisa ran to one of the teachers. When the teacher saw the boys misbehaving, he immediately suspended them from the school. Jafar saves the hospital. Jafar used to work in a small hospital in Iraq. As the violence in Iraq escalated, the number of injured patients began to increase. At first, it was only the injured civilians who came. But as the violence progressed, some of the rebels began coming in as well. For the doctors, it made no difference. Every patient was treated to the best of their abilities. But the rebels expected special treatment and wanted priority to be given to their wounded men. One day, when the doctor refused to see an injured rebel before other wounded patients, the rebel got angry. He suddenly pulled out a hand grenade and ignited it, saying he would kill everyone in the room. Everyone was scared. Jafar quickly pulled the grenade out of his hand and threw it into an empty park nearby. Thanks to his quick action, all the patients in the hospital were saved. Kenji rescues his neighbor. Kenji lived in a small town in Japan. His neighbor was an old man who could not walk due to an accident. This had made him bad-tempered and unfriendly. However, Kenji always wished him a good day. One day, Kenji and his friends were playing in the park when they felt the earth rumble. Earthquake! they shouted. They could see the buildings around them shaking. People were running out of their houses. Kenji suddenly remembered his neighbor who could not walk. While everyone ran to safety, Kenji ran back into the city. He ran back to his house and saw his neighbor was trying to crawl to safety. Kenji quickly picked him up and pulled him onto his back. Then he ran away to a safer area. They left just in time. As they were moving away, they saw a tree fall on the exact spot the old man had fallen on. Khadija rescues a group of children. Khadija was 10 years old girl. She was very brave and courageous. She lived in a small village. One day, when she was returning from school, she heard the voices of some children crying. These voices were coming from behind some bushes. She looked for the children in the bushes. 
she found a group of seven children ranging in the ages from 7 to 11. They had been separated from their parents by some men. These men were taking them to the city to make them work in factories. The children were very scared. Khadija quickly decided to help these children. While the men were having their food, she took the children to her farm and hid them behind some piles of straw. When the men came looking for the children, she feigned ignorance, even in the face of dire threats. She managed to save the children from a life of servitude. Francisco saves a train full of people. Francisco's father was a train driver. He would often let Francisco ride with him, which he enjoyed very much. One day, Francisco and his father were singing songs together in the engine compartment when suddenly his father fell down. Francisco did not know it, but his father had suffered a heart attack. The train was a few kilometers away from the nearest station. There were many other trains running on these tracks. Francisco tried to retrieve his father. But when all his efforts failed, he realized he was responsible for driving the train now. If they stood in one place, they could be hit by any other train passing by. Francisco had seen his father drive the train on this route many times. But he still felt scared to do it by himself. However, he knew there was no other option. He guided the train on the twisted path until they reached the nearest station. Daphros saves her siblings. Daphros lived in Rwanda with a family. She was the eldest of their siblings. One day, while their parents were away at work, a man knocked at their door. When Daphros opened the door, he barged in and told her to hide him. The man had a knife in his hand and there were blood marks all over his clothes. Daphros was very frightened. The man told her that he would attack her if she screamed. Daphros's siblings were playing in the next room. She knew that they would be in great danger if she did not do what the stranger said. So she took him into the kitchen where he hid behind some cartons. She did not let her siblings know there was a stranger hiding in the house. She did not want them to panic. She calmly suggested they should play outside. Once outside, she ran to the neighbor's house and called the police. Soon, the stranger was arrested. Neil prevents an accident. Neil was a young professor of sociology in a leading college in America. One day, he was driving to his college when he noticed a car in the next lane moving erratically. Suddenly, the car swerved over and hit the barrier on the side of the road. But the driver did not stop. The car was dragging along and sparks were flying from its body. Neil felt very worried. He pulled over beside the car. He saw that the driver was lying sprawled over the steering wheel. Neil knew the car had to be stopped before other people got hurt. He pulled his car in front of the other car and applied the brakes. As the other car 
crashed into his, it finally stopped. Neil rushed to pull out the driver, who was suffering from a stroke. Thanks to Neil's courageous act, his life was saved. Elena saves a girl from being drowned. Elena lived in Russia. She was a student of art history. One day, she saw two girls skipping in front of her. As she crossed the bridge, they stopped to look at the wheel. By mistake, one of the girls dropped her doll. She peered over the bridge to see where her doll fell, but lost her balance and fell into the river. Alina took off her shoes and coat and jumped into the river to save the girl. The water was very cold. The girl's clothes were soaking wet and kept on dragging her down. However, Alina managed to pull her to safety. However, it was so cold that the girl's teeth were clattering. Elena could see that the girl had started turning blue. If she did not reach a hospital soon, she would die of cold. Elena wrapped the girl in a coat and rushed her to a hospital. Lela leads the revolution. Lela lived in Turkey. She was a college student who liked to go out with her friends. During that time, the government in Turkey was very unpopular and had taken many measures against people's wishes. People often criticized the government, but no one acted up on this criticism. One day, the government announced that they would be demolishing a park to make way for a shopping complex. This park was very old and nearly everyone had spent time playing there as a child. Lela decided that it was time to move beyond words. She told her friends that they should go to the park and protest. Her friends felt that would not have any impact as they were too few in number. They contacted more people and on the day of protest, there were more than 5,000 people in the park. The government had to change its decision. Jamila saves lives from a flood. Jamila lived in Bangladesh. Floods were an annual affair and most people were prepared to handle them. During the rainy season, they would move to safer areas and return to the low-lying lands after the rains. One day, it began to rain heavily in winter. Everyone stayed inside his house. They thought the rain would finish in a few hours. Jamila went out to check on her pet calf. When she was returning, she saw the river was overflowing on the upper banks. In a few minutes, the whole village would be flooded. There wasn't enough time to inform everyone. She grabbed a tin drum her father kept to store fodder. She began to beat it loudly with a stick. People came out to scold her for the noise she was making. She immediately warned them about the overflowing river. Everyone ran and saved his life. Hassan saves his classmates. Hassan and his classmates had gone for an excursion. They saw an empty riverbed with beautiful stones in it. 
they got out to spend some time in the river bed while they were strolling around they heard a high pitched whistle no one paid attention to it suddenly they saw water swirling down the river bed the water was coming with great force all the students ran to the edge of the river to escape the water hasan was climbing up the bank when he saw that many of his friends were engulfed by the water hasan was a good swimmer he turned back to help his friends he rescued two boys but by the time he turned to rescue a third friend the water was too powerful for him he saw an overhanging tree ahead he climbed on it and grabbed his friend before he was swept away farid saves many lives farid lived in a small village in uttar pradesh every year a fair was organized during diwali people came from nearby villages while in the fair farid was passing by the enclosure for the bulls he noticed that there was a lot of noise he did not pay much attention a short while later he saw a group of men running from the enclosure one of the bulls had escaped the noise was enraging it and by now the bull was acting like a crazy animal farid knew that many people would be injured if it entered the main area of the fair He quickly grabbed a piece of red cloth and ran towards the bull waving the cloth in its face He knew this would further enrage the bull and it would try to attack him As the bull turned towards him in anger Farid ran away from the fair saving many innocent lives Harish goes to school Harish was the son of a lowly village potter. He wanted to go to school, but he was afraid that the other students would not let him enter. He would often stand outside the school compound and try to hear what was being taught. One day, he heard the teacher say that every child in India has the right to education harish decided to claim his right the next day he went to school the other boys told him he could not enter because he was a potter's son that does not matter replied harish everyone has a right to study in our country The boys were very angry at his answer and beat him up badly but Harish did not leave the school He was determined to study Every day the boys would beat him but he did not leave Finally they accepted him as their classmate in the coastal area of Andhra Pradesh One day the sea was full of high waves. Soon there was an announcement saying that a hurricane would be hitting their village. When Santosh heard this, he rushed to bring his boats to a safer area before leaving the village. By the time he had dragged his boats to safety, the sky was overcast. Santosh was rushing home when he heard a voice calling for help. He looked around but could see no one. The shouting continued. Santosh was near a cliff. When he looked over the side, 
he saw a young boy hanging on to a tree growing from the cliff wall he had been blown over by the strong winds risking his own life santosh held out his hand to the boy and helped him climb up the cliff wall he then carried the boy on his back to the nearest shelter fidius saves the animals from a flood fidius was 11 years old she lived in a village in kashmir and loved to play with animals she had decided to become a veterinary doctor when she grew up one day there was a heavy rainfall and river jhelum began overflowing no one was prepared for the sudden flood people scrambled to save their lives and rescue their belongings fidius suddenly realized that no one was thinking about the animals the cows were still inside the barns the dogs were tied to their posts and the horses were tied to their carts they would be killed in the flood Fidius ran out and tried to save the animals. She untied all the animals. She opened the doors so that the animals might escape to a safer ground. She took the smaller animals like hens etc to the roof of her house where they would be safe. Punky helps arrest terrorists Punky lived in the northeastern part of India She was a young and courageous girl Every day she would go out in the forest and collect leaves and plants to feed her baby goat One day when she was climbing the mountains She saw three men hiding behind a tree. She was very curious about them and hid behind a huge rock to find out more. She realized that the men were not Indians. They were terrorists who were plotting something dangerous. Punky silently moved away. Once she was at a distance she ran back to the city She did not stop until she reached the police station She told them what she had seen and guided the policemen back to the spot where the terrorists were hiding Thanks to Banki the terrorists were apprehended before they could put their plan into action Natali overpowers hijacker. Natali loved to travel. She used to work as an air hostess and this gave her an opportunity to see many countries. On one of her flights, she noticed a man behaving strangely. Before she could do anything, the man suddenly jumped up and said, Nobody should move. I am hijacking the plane. All the passengers were scared and some people began to scream out of fear. This enraged the hijacker. Natali and the crew requested the hijacker to let them move in the aisle and take care of the passengers. They quickly tried to calm down the passengers. Natali noticed that the hijacker was not very confident. In a short while, he had become very nervous and tense. She waited until he was wiping the perspiration off his face. Suddenly, she lunged for his gun. Once she had his gun, 
the other crew members managed to restrain him. Rishi puts his duty above everyone. Rishi lived in Leh in Ladakh. He was the manager of a hotel. He loved his work and took great pride in ensuring that the tourists were satisfied. One day, he noticed that there were thick black clouds covering the sky. Rishi advised the tourists not to go outside very far since it looked as if it would rain heavily. However, no one was prepared for the sudden cloud burst. It seemed as if someone had opened a tap from heaven. Rishi's wife and children were alone at home. He was very worried about them and wanted to check on them. However, he realized that he was more needed at the hotel. Soon, it flooded all over. The tourists had started to panic. Rishi stayed at the hotel and allayed their fears. It was only when the water started receding that he left the hotel to visit his wife and children. He signed up with international organizations to work for free. He liked to help people to the best of his abilities. On one of these trips, Dimitri was sent to a health camp in Central Africa. Dimitri found many people had high fever in the villages adjoining the camp. There was no lab available for him to identify the disease conclusively. But he could see that it was a contagious disease. Many patients were dying of high fever. Those who survived were weak and delirious. In a few days, the other doctors began leaving one by one. They did not want to put their lives at risk. However, Dimitri stayed on. He knew it was very dangerous and he could fall ill as well. But he felt that as a doctor, it was his duty to cure his patients, even if that meant risking his life. A bus protects everyone. A bus was 35 years old man. One day, he was at the bank when a group of robbers rushed in, brandishing their guns. They asked the bank manager to give them all the cash. All the customers of the bank were forced into the locker room while the robbers collected as much cash as possible. The customers in the locker room were beginning to panic. They pleaded with the robbers to let them go. This angered the robbers. Abbas stepped in. He told the robbers that he would ensure that no one spoke up if they did not harm anyone. Abbas calmed down the panicking customers. He allayed their fears. He also talked with the robbers to soothe them down. He was afraid that they might shoot someone in the heat of the moment. Even though he was scared yet, Abbas saved the hostages from being killed. Alfonso saves the passengers. It was a beautiful day in Cuba. Alfonso and his friends decided to go for a boat ride. When their turn came, Alfonso saw that the boat was already filled with passengers. Let us wait for the next one, he told us. Do not worry, it is safe. Please get on. 
said the boatman. His friends also did not want to wait. So Alfonso and his friends boarded the boat. When they reached the middle of the lake, there was a pleasant breeze. Everyone enjoyed it. Suddenly, the wind turned stronger. The boatman turned the boat back to the shore. But the boat was moving very slowly because it was overpacked. Suddenly, a strong gust of wind overturned the boat. Many people began to be drowned. Alfonso pulled some passengers back towards the boat where they could hold on to the lifesavers. He dived into the water and rescued many others. Zane prevents a robbery. Zane was a goat herd. He used to spend his day with his goats in the mountains. One day, when he was returning in the evening, he noticed that two goats were missing. He brought the rest of the herd to their enclosure and climbed back up to look for the missing goats. While he was wandering in the mountains, he heard a goat bleating. One of the goats had fallen into a ditch. Its companion was standing nearby and bleating. Zane took out the goat. Then he noticed that there were three men hiding behind some bushes. Their attention was on the house higher up. This house belonged to the richest man in the village. His daughter was about to get married. Zane realized that the men were planning to rob the house. He quickly rushed down the mountains and informed the police. The robbers were caught immediately. Eva fights for peace. Eva was born and brought up in a conflict-ridden area of Colombia. She had seen many people die in petty fights and each fight left someone thirsting for revenge. As she grew older, she realized that the only way to stop this cycle of violence was to stop the violence altogether. Eva decided that she would work to bring peace back to her town. Whenever she heard that two people were fighting, she would rush to stop them. Many people got angry with her and told her not to interfere in their personal matters. Others made fun of her. But no matter what happened, Eva kept on preventing fights. Slowly, people began to listen to her. Most people still did not agree with her, but they came to respect her. As time passed, there were not fights at all. The place was now peaceful with no violence. Joanne saves the environment. Joanne lived in Brazil. His house was outside the city and close to the rainforest. His father worked as a health officer for the tribes who still lived inside the rainforest. One day, an old tribal man came to visit Juan's father. He was very angry about something and was complaining. Juan asked his father what the matter was. His father told him that the old man's tribe was being forced to leave the campsite because a company was setting up their wood factory on that spot. Juan was horrified to think what effect that would have on the environment. 
he and his friends decided to fight for the trees. They filed many complaints and publicized the whole issue. They went to live in the forest and prevented the factory from being set up by hugging the trees and refusing to leave. Ultimately, the factory was shifted somewhere else. Zuwa saves her baby brother. Zuwa lived in a village in Zimbabwe. She loved to play with her baby brother. She would often take him outside their hut and play with him. One day, the two of them were playing. Her brother was feeling hungry, so she went in to get some food for him. When she came out, she was shocked to see a lion near the hut. It was very close to where her brother was playing. Zuwa did not know what to do. She was afraid that the lion might attack her brother if she made any sudden noise. Suddenly, she saw the tiger moving closer to her brother. Zuwa threw caution to the wind and ran out, shouting at the top of her voice. The lion turned towards her with a roar. Zuwa threw the hot partridge in her hands on the lion's face and ran to save her brother. Zulfikar helps a stranger. Zulfikar was at a restaurant one day having lunch with his friends. Suddenly, one of the men on the table behind him began to gag. Something was stuck in his throat, but he was unable to dislodge it. He started choking. His friends tried rubbing his back, but nothing worked. By now, he was having difficulty in breathing. No one knew what to do. Zulfikar rushed forward to help. Are you a doctor? asked the man's companions. Zulfikar knew there was no time for all those questions. He pushed them aside and went to help the choking man. He grabbed him from behind and pushed a fist into his chest. Other people thought he was hurting the man and tried to push aside Zulfikar, but he did not stop. He repeated his actions until suddenly the man spat out some food and started breathing normally. Nancy saves a kitten. Nancy was only six years old. She had a pet cat named Bluebell and a kitten named Snowdrop. Snowdrop was very naughty and would often create problems for herself. One day, Nancy heard Snowdrop mewing in the garden. When Nancy went out to find Snowdrop, she saw that she had climbed up a tall tree. Now she was too scared to come down. Nancy was alone at home. She knew she should wait for an adult to help. But she could see that Snowdrop was afraid. Nancy was also afraid of heights. But she felt bad for Snowdrop. She took a deep breath and started climbing up the tree. She felt scared, but she knew that she had to do this for Snowdrop. Nancy was able to bring Snowdrop down. She felt very brave because she had not given in to her fear of heights. She was very happy. Erin saves her sister. One day, Erin and her sister Amy were making too 
much noise while playing inside the house. So their mother asked them to go out and play in the garden. Both the girls played for some time and then they began to feel tired. The weather was very pleasant so they decided to stay outside on the lawn. They didn't realize when they fell asleep. Erin woke up after some time and turned towards Amy. She was shocked to see that there was a snake sleeping right next to her arm. Erin was very afraid. If she made any noise, the snake would attack her. On the other hand, if she did not warn Amy, she could hurt the snake by simply moving her arm. Erin saw that Amy was in a deep sleep. She quietly got up and slowly moved behind the snake. Then, like lightning, she grabbed the snake and threw it away. Benito helps the prisoners. Benito was a young man who wanted to work for the poor. He wanted to help those who had no one. He joined many organizations but never got a feeling of satisfaction. He never felt as if he made a difference. If not him, someone else would help. Then one day, he found out that a security prison was looking for a counsellor. Many people had turned down this job because it meant staying in the prison full time and helping the prisoners. Benito decided to take up this challenge. When he went to the prison, he was very scared by some of the prisoners. They looked cruel. Benito felt that his help would make a real difference to these people. If he changed their way of life, they could be better people. He faced many taunts from the prisoners. A few even attacked him, but Benito tried to reform them. Darius accepts his guilt. Darius was a brash young man. One day, he was speeding down the highway when another car tried to overtake him. Darius swore to prevent him from overtaking. There was an accident and the second car spun out of control. It crashed into the barrier. Many people pulled over to help. No one noticed Darius who had parked ahead. The next day, Darius read in the newspaper about the accident. He read that the driver was badly hurt. Darius felt very guilty. He knew that he was to blame, but he did not have the courage to accept his mistake. The accident had happened in the night and the driver only remembered the car he crashed into. Somebody driving a similar car had been arrested. Darius knew he had to step forward to save an innocent man. It was not easy, but somehow he found the courage to do the right thing. Fyodor speaks the truth. Fyodor was a biochemist. He worked in the research division of a multinational company. His job was to conduct quality checks on new products that the company prepared. A few months into his job, Fyodor realized that the company was not following the right procedures. He also found that many products did not meet the safety standards. 
he immediately informed his supervisors. However, he saw that no charges were made. The firm continued its old style of working. Fyodor did not know what to do. One day, he saw the products of his firm in the market. Fyodor was shocked, for he knew that the products had not met all the safety standards. Fyodor realized that his complaint had not been taken seriously. He immediately contacted the CEO, Chief Executive Officer, directly and told him all the details. The CEO thanked him and ordered the products to be immediately withdrawn. The supervisors were also suspended. Aaron helps a road accident victim. Aaron was a responsible young man. One day, he was out on some official work when he saw that the road was blocked. He thought it was a traffic jam and patiently waited. When the traffic started moving, he saw that there had been an accident. A young lady had been thrown off her two-wheeler. She lay unconscious on one side of the road. People passing by slowed down, but no one stopped to help. They were afraid of getting involved in a medical legal case. Aaron also continued on his way because he did not want to be late for his work. But then he felt ashamed of himself and pulled over. He took the young lady to the hospital. The doctors told him that he had come just in time. A little more late, the lady would have been dead. Everyone praised Aaron for his good work. Nicole Conquers the Mountain Nicole lived in a small village in the shadows of the Andes. It was her desire to climb to the top of the mountain near her home. But Nicole came from a very poor family. She knew that she would never be able to get money or time for a mountain climbing trip. Everyone told her she would never be able to climb up the mountain. However, Nicole never gave up on her wish. Many years went by and one day Nicole got the chance to accompany a scientific expedition to the mountain top as an assistant. She was very happy. When the ascent started, Nicole was very excited, but each day proved tougher than the previous. One day, she stumbled and sprained her ankle, but she did not give up. She knew there was work to be done. She bravely continued climbing up the mountain until she reached the peak. Danilo scares a bear. Danilo was a young boy. His parents were animal specialists. They would often travel to different countries to study the animals there. Sometimes Danilo used to accompany them. One day his parents were asked to study about the life of grizzly bears. Danilo went with them on the trip. They spent two weeks in the jungle and observed the grizzly bears. One day, Danilo was feeling tired, so his parents left him in the camp. While Danilo was resting, he heard some screams. He went out and saw that a grizzly bear was attacking a girl. The girl did not know what to do. 
Danilo had been observing the bears for quite a few days and he knew how to scare away a grizzly bear. He ran in front of the bear and raised his arms high. He started shouting loudly. His behavior scared away the bear and saved the girl. Viola is very brave. Viola loved to spend time with her grandmother. One day, her grandmother took her to a farm. Both of them had a lot of fun. On the way back, the tire burst and their car crashed into a pole. Viola hurt her arm badly. She did not know it, but it was actually a fracture. She was going to tell her grandmother when she realized that the accident had given her grandmother a concussion. Viola knew that her grandmother should not be moved. She made her comfortable in the back seat and set out for help. But now it was dark. Viola had to walk for 5 miles on the dark and lonely road before she got help. However, Viola was very brave and knew that her grandmother's life depended on timely medical help. Despite the throbbing pain in her arm, she did not stop until she found help for her grandmother. A patriotic speech. Akhilesh was the son of a freedom fighter. He studied in a school in the year 1942. One day, a competition was held to decide the best speaker. The topic was the benefits of British rule. Akhilesh did not agree to this topic, but he wanted to speak on the stage. On the day of the competition, the British governor was invited as judge. Akhilesh gave a speech in which he spoke frankly that he felt there was no benefit from the British rule. The teachers were shocked to hear his speech. and so was the governor midway through his speech he was pulled off the stage however akhilesh did not go quietly he kept on shouting his speech even when the principal threatened him to be silent he did not stop akhilesh was not afraid of anyone or anything as he knew he was speaking the truth ramu attacks the kidnappers ramu used to work at the landlord's house his job was to take care of the landlord's youngest son ajay ajay was a very active child and ramu was always on his toes to take care of him one day While playing on the riverside, Ajay ran far ahead of Ramu. Suddenly, a car stopped and a man got down to grab Ajay. He picked up Ajay and threw him in the car. Ramu ran behind them. They were already in the car by the time Ramu reached them. He jumped onto the car. and hung on until the slowed down they wanted to shake him off but he jumped into the car through the window and started hitting them he grabbed hold of ajay and jumped out of the moving car they hid in the ditch until the kidnappers left in disappointment shashi helps nab murderer Shashi was 10 years old girl. 
She lived with her parents in a small town in Uttar Pradesh in India. One day, her parents left her at a friend's house for the day. Shashi was playing on the roof when she saw a man come to the neighbor's house. He rang the bell. When someone opened the door, he pulled out a pistol and shot him. Then he looked around to see if anyone had seen him. Shashi quickly hid behind the water tank on the roof. The shooter did not see her. Later on, when the police came and asked if anyone had seen anything, Shashi stepped forward bravely and told them all that she had seen. She described the man to the police. She was not at all afraid that he might harm her. She knew she was doing the right thing. Thanks to Shashi, the shooter was soon apprehended. Nasser saves old man. Nasser was a very lazy boy. He liked to spend his whole time sleeping in the sun. His mother was afraid that he would become a vagabond and so she would always nag him to do some work. One day, Nasser was in a park to hide from his mother's nagging when he saw a group of teenager boys vandalizing an old man's cart. Nasser was shocked to see that they were teasing the man and were trying to take his hard-earned money. Nazar did not think twice. He rushed to the old man's help. When the teenagers tried to push him aside, he fought back. Nazar was able to hold back the gang long enough for the old man to get the assistance of the police. Even though the teenagers were older than he, Nazar fought against them because he knew they were misbehaving with the old man. Rajesh catches the chain snatchers. Rajesh was a young man. He liked to go for a walk every evening. Normally, he would meet many people, but now people were scared of a gang of criminals. Actually, a gang of chain snatchers was operating in their area. Many women had lost their valuables. Rajesh was walking down the road when he saw a motorcycle slow down near him. She was busy adjusting her child's pram. The rider asked her for some directions. When she started directing them, they suddenly snatched her golden chain and revved up the motorcycle. The snatchers pulled so hard that the lady fell on the road. Rajesh felt very angry, so he ran up to the motorcycle. Just as they were pulling away, he grabbed the person sitting on the back seat. He did it with such force that the motorcycle disbalanced. The chain snatchers fell down and were caught by the people. Mahesh saves the slum. Mahesh was a poor but brave rickshaw puller. He lived in a slum with his wife and children. One day, he was having lunch when there was a loud noise from the neighbor's house. The woman who lived next door came running out, screaming, Fire! The gas cylinder in her house had started leaking. Now her house was also started to burn. The fire started when she lit a matchstick to turn the burner on. The kitchen contained leaking gas. 
she needed help mahesh knew that in a few minutes the cylinder would explode and there would be a huge fire the fire would spread very fast the whole slum could be destroyed he ran into his neighbor's house and pulled out the burning cylinder he dragged it to an abandoned tank nearby and threw it inside the cylinder exploded with great force by then the people had put out the fire in the neighbor's house mahesh's arms were burned but thanks to his bravery the slum was safe aruni brings water to the village there was an unfortunate village that had no drinking water the villagers had to walk miles to fetch water Aruni the young and courageous girl of this village decided to find a solution to the water problem encouraged by her geography teacher Aruni asked everyone in the village to collect rain water but no one listened to her she alone used to conserve rain water in a ditch that she had dug The water being dirty, no one used this water. The geography teacher told Aruni that she might find water inside if she could dig the ground. Since she had collected water in a small ditch, there might possibly be drinking water underground. Aruni asked the villagers to help her dig. but everyone was cynical so aruni started digging the surface alone each day she was disappointed but she continued her search one day she found water she happily shared water with the villagers thanks for watching do like share Subscribe to Sahil Book House